I want to tell you a story of a pretty incredible animal migration that happens right here in the Daly River in the NT. It's, a, it's an animal that starts its journey at about two centimetres long and can travel hundreds of kilometres of some of the largest rivers up here, including the Daly River. I'm actually talking about a freshwater prawn, which is one we all know as cherubin. It's a pretty vital resource for many fish, reptiles and people, and as such it's, it's a really important component of tropical river ecosystems. But given that tropical rivers are facing considerable pressure from developments such as water extraction and damming, it's important we really understand what impact these developments will have on, on cherubin and in turn the food webs that they support. So to do this we must really understand cherubin life history. And life history means knowing do they actually migrate? Where and when does reproduction occur? And at what size do they reach sexual maturity? And for cherubin, no one's actually collected this information before. So I carried out two years of extensive fieldwork on the Daly River, collected over 4,000 prawns, and then carried out a series of laboratory experiments. We, we always thought that the females would move downstream towards the estuary to breed, as the larvae require salt water to develop, and they can't survive very long in fresh water. This is what studies on similar species had found. What we found, however, was a similar number of females that had eggs throughout the entire river, as far upstream as 400 kilometres from the estuary. This raises the, the important question that, that, are these eggs actually viable? And if they are, do the larvae actually require salt water to develop? And do, the, do they even need to migrate at all? We found that the eggs produced far upstream are actually viable, that larvae are released to the water, and that these larvae, they do require salt water to develop. And if they don't reach it within about seven days, they'll die. And so this means, this means that the uh, cherubin life history is strongly linked to flow. With large wet season flows, when the river really comes up, the larva from further upstream can actually reach the estuary in time, where they grow into juvenile prawns, and when the wet season flows start to recede, they then migrate en masse back upstream. We found over a million animals per night were moving up over about a month. And so it's likely this migration is, is providing vital nutrients between different parts of the river as these animals move hundreds of kilometres upstream. This study is, has completely changed our understanding of the role of cherubin in tropical rivers. We know that they are migratory, and so any, any development that impedes the movement of larva or juveniles is likely to cause a massive decline in the cherubin population and in turn impact the productivity of tropical rivers.